Current sources can be hard to understand, but everyone understands a voltage regulator. So let's convert a voltage source into a current source. Let's say we have a 5 volt light bulb. These are common in automotive applications. I want to run my 5 volt light bulb off of a 12 volt battery. So I use an LM7805 5 volt regulator to regulate the voltage down to 5 volts so the bulb does not burn up. Now the times are a changing, so I want to convert to an LED. But LEDs are not voltage driven devices, but current driven devices. The LED requires 66.7 milliamps of current at about 3.1 volts to produce the same output as my 5 volt light bulb. Any more current than that and it will burn up, so I can't just replace the light bulb with the LED or it will burn up for sure. So I calculate how much resistance it would take to limit the current to 66.7 milliamps with a 5 volt source across it. The value comes out to 75 ohms. Now I place the 75 ohm resistor between the V-out pin and the ground pin of the voltage regulator. Remember, the voltage regulator will do anything it has to do to make sure that it sees exactly 5 volts between the V-out pin and the ground pin. In other words, it will make sure that exactly 66.7 milliamps is always flowing through the 75 ohm resistor, and consequently through the LED. If the LED is removed, the voltage regulator will take the V-out pin all the way up to 10 volts, that is, 12 volts minus the 2 volt internal dropout voltage and finally give up trying to get the two pins to be exactly 5 volts apart. But with the LED in place, the voltage regulator has just become a current regulator, i.e. a current source, ensuring that 66.7 milliamps always flows. Of course, if you need more current, make the resistor smaller. If you need less current, make the resistor bigger. The only gotcha here is that the ground pin will leak a little current, about 4 milliamps, and that can't be helped but you can include that in your calculations or use an op amp in a follower configuration to solve that problem.